Hey guys, and welcome to my channel, Time is But a Window. And this video is gonna be all about reaction time. Now, ever since my early days of Counter-Strike, I was really curious about pro players' reaction time. This is from back in the days of K-Sharp and X3 destroying the scene. What I found out was a far more complicated answer than just saying, hey, that guy's faster than you and there's nothing you can do about it. In fact, there's a lot more than your natural reaction time that go into a game like Counter-Strike. So to start this video off, we're going to go into talking about monitors and their input latencies. Now when we talk about monitors, most people immediately start thinking about response time. Monitor response time is how long it takes for one pixel to change from one color to another. Now gaming monitors have found a clever way to reduce response time through a thing called overdrive. Here's an example of what overdrive does. Here you can see that with it off, you have a ghosting effect, and with it on, it clears things up. Basically, the ghosting effect is by pixels not being able to change colors quick enough. But it's not just clearing up the blurry part. The front of the image is being shown quicker. Let me clarify that. The front of the image is actually being shown at the exact same time. But because the pixels are changing quicker, you're noticing it faster. So you can understand that why in a game like Counter-Strike this would be so important. Now because they found that you can increase the voltage like that to change the pixels quicker, they added an extra setting called Extreme here. Now this should in theory allow pixels to change even faster, but as you can see here, it doesn't always work out that way. For reference, the monitor in the image here is the PG258Q. And you can see, at least on this monitor, making the overdrive at maximum makes it so it actually has a slower pixel response time. But after going through multiple monitors, I have found that is not usually the case. For example, this monitor here, when you put it on fast, you can see that you get a better pixel response time than normal, but you get a massive amount of overshoot. So what is overshoot? Well, think of it as the exact opposite of ghosting. This can also lead to pixel response issues, especially if the screen is constantly changing a lot. This is because the pixels must also compensate for the new overshoot. And from there, let's move on to the refresh rate. So it should become no surprise that the faster the refresh rate, the faster the response time. Luckily, this one is pretty self-explanatory, so let's move on to input lag. This is the amount of time it takes for the signal to be sent from the computer to the monitor and the monitor to realize it needs to change its pixels. This is actually something that people usually overlook when compared to pixel response time. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. Both of these are hooked up to the same console. Notice how far behind the LCD TV is compared to the CRT TV. Granted, the difference isn't as big as these two TVs right here, but it is comparable to the response time. And while we're on the topic of monitors, let's move over to graphics settings. Now, the first thing you want to do is turn on low latency mode and put it on ultra. If you don't have this mode, make sure you downloaded the latest drivers because this only came out on August 20th. Next up, don't use G-Sync or FreeSync. It seems to create input lag. From my research, it showed in Overwatch it was creating 16 milliseconds of input lag at 240 hertz. Ultra low motion blur did far better, only about 2 milliseconds of input lag, though on the BenQ monitors it was 0.5 milliseconds. And I should mention those results are also at 240 hertz. Moving on, here's one you might not know about. If you're using GPU scaling and you switch it to display scaling, you'll actually get lower latency. Now, sadly, my monitor doesn't support display scaling, but if you have one that does, here's what it will look like. And finally, they've added a new integer scaling, and I think that goes off the GPU, so you'll probably get the same latency issue there. And this isn't necessarily a small increase either. It can be up to 10 milliseconds, depending on the GPU in the game. Which kind of sucks for me, because like I said, my monitor doesn't support display scaling. Asus, please fix. Okay, so based on monitor and graphics settings alone, you can probably make your reaction 25 milliseconds faster. But that's not all, folks, because we live in the future. So I'm about to segue into talking about mice, but before I do that, let's talk about keyboards. So recently, a few companies have been moving away from mechanical switches to optical switches. And it just turns out one of the biggest improvements about optical switches is they are much, much faster. A typical gaming mechanical keyboard is in between 10 milliseconds and 30 milliseconds in response time. These are being advertised at 0.2 milliseconds. So that is quite an upgrade. Which brings me back to mice. So here's a spreadsheet of mice and their click latencies. Okay, so the baseline here is the Akari Optical. Those mice that have negative numbers are not actually faster than light. That just means that they have faster click latencies than the Akari by that amount. But all these are about to be completely blown away as the first generation of mice with optical switches has been released. Say hello to the Razer Viper and the Endgame XM1. 
Now, just like the keyboards, these mice are claiming less than one millisecond click latencies. Sadly, there hasn't been enough extensive testing, but if this is the case, this mouse would be about 10 milliseconds faster than the current Logitech G Pro series and about 14 milliseconds faster than the current generation of Zowie mice and Razer mice, as well as about six milliseconds faster than the current baseline on this spreadsheet. This means it would even blow the fastest mechanical mouse out of the water by about 5 milliseconds. And just from graphic settings, monitor, and mouse, you can see how much this adds up. And the differences are even more extreme if you haven't upgraded in a while. I mean, back when I started playing Counter-Strike, I was using a wheel mouse optical. Look at the click latency on that. And I feel bad for the people using a Corsair M90. All right, now that we've gone over peripherals, let's go into actually improving your natural reaction time. So the first question is, is it even possible? Now, reaction time comes in handy quite a bit in our lives, and it's no surprise that there was actually tests done on this. Now, the study proved that reaction time does decrease with practice. Now, remember, this is something you're going to have to work at gradually over time. Now, this isn't just saying that you can do a reaction time test just once and then magically get faster. It means you really need to dedicate time to it like if you were trying to work out. Or you could just do it the lazy way and take drugs. And I'm not going to go into the effects of cocaine or Adderall here. I'm just going to talk about simple caffeine. In these tests, they found that 300 milligrams of caffeine would cause a significant effect in decreasing reaction time. But going upward of 300 milligrams of caffeine had no significant effect. Just for reference, a can of Coke has about 29 milligrams of caffeine. A cup of coffee, however, has about 95 milligrams of caffeine. So I guess just drink four cups of coffee 45 minutes before you play a match. Meanwhile, due to my heart condition, I haven't had any caffeine since I was 14. And speaking of age, do you get slower as you get older? And according to this study, the answer is yes. At 18 years of age, every year after that, your reaction time slows by about 0.5 milliseconds each year. It might not be much at first, but after about 20 years, that's 10 milliseconds. Which means in another 40 years, I'm gonna be as slow as 10s. Oh, chill out, guys. I know he's still much better than me. But if you're interested in finding out more about human reaction time, check out the channel Ron Rambo Kim, where he does an entire video on the subject and goes into a lot more depth than I did here. Now, I know I should probably end the video right here, but there's something I want to show you guys when it comes to the monitor and the mouse. Now, not too far back, Linus Tech Tips did a video comparing wireless and wired mice in CSGO. So he found out there's approximately a 15 millisecond delay from when a gaming mouse is moved to its response on the screen. Now, this test was mainly just to compare Logitech wireless to current gaming mice. And between the two, there was hardly any difference. The wireless mouse actually won by one millisecond. The main point is you can still see how big the delay is. And what's even worse is that click latency has an extra buffer on that. This is actually something that Valve could fix, but chooses not to. So here you can see this guy made a script so that it's supposed to fire in the middle of the shot and get the headshot. And when he runs it slow, you can see it works as intended. When he runs it at full speed, it always waits until after the movement is over to fire. On the other hand, here's a game called Reflex, and this game actually does it properly, where it just sends the input out immediately as it's pressed. This is actually the same way the prior Counter-Strike games worked. A better way to explain it is have you ever been in the middle of a flick shot when you knew the crosshair was right on him when you click, but you ended up continuing to move the crosshair and the bullet missed. Valve, I know I've been asking for years, but please fix. And the last thing I was going to cover is that I believe you have the ability to lower your latency by turning off raw input. I saw an article on it a while back, but I just wasn't able to find it for this video. But just remember, if you do do it, it does come at the cost of acceleration. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And as always, have a great day.